What I'm working on today is a 2009 Nissan Murano. And the problem that we have is the alternator, which is located right there. This thing here is the alternator. And the problem that we have is that the alternator's not working. And some people call it NOP or FUBAR or whatever you want to call it. You take your choice of flavors, it's broken. And uh, Nissan has done us a favor and put it in a place where it's difficult to get to. Thank you. Right under the dipstick where the, you put the oil in and the oil uh, fill spot. And when you don't put the dipstick in, the oil comes out, gets all over the alternator, and messes it up. So, you can see the debris on it. It's got oil, moisture. There's oil everywhere from that dipstick not being in there. And I'm going to go up top side and we're going to have a look. Alright, so, it says it right here. Never pull out oil level gauge when filling with engine oil. Well, this is the oil level gauge, and someone... Not going to say who, but someone, an oil change somewhere, they didn't put that back in, they left a dipstick, that left that sucker laying up here like this. You know, there's the dipstick, thank you. Drive it down the road, the oil starts pumping out of that little hole there, where the dipstick goes in, that hole, oil comes out, and it comes out when you fill it too, but just driving it around, so everything gets oil on it. And that's what we have. We have oil everywhere. Let's see if I can get it from the front. It's difficult to see from the top on this. Difficult to see anything. So, but we're going out the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the AC compressor down and just lower it. And once I get it lowered, then I'll be able to access some of this stuff. Alright, so this is what it looks like from the bottom, okay? This is the passenger side of the vehicle. Uh, there's the exhaust oil pan. Here's the oil pan drain plug. And of course, as you can see, there's oil moisture everywhere. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these AC bolts out. We're not going to release the AC Freon at all, okay? We're not taking that out. We're going to loosen up these wires. I'm going to probably take these wires loose and this bolt out here so that we can lower this cooling line down and allow the AC compressor to come down as far as possible and then once we get that cleared out and you can see that that alternator is right there above it okay this is it my fingers are and uh, we'll get the bolts out of it just make sure that when you get to this point you're gonna have to take the battery loose and disconnect all battery power because if you touch that to the ground anywhere and spark it you might be replacing your computer and no telling what else if you go fooling around with the fireworks so let's not do that let's keep it simple all right so I got these two these two bolts are out okay and the other bolts these two come out on the other side those are done and now what we've got is we've got this pivot bolt here okay that one there and it's got a little dog ear on it so that when you tighten it up it keeps it from spinning and normally something like this this is a pinch bolt that has a automatically adjusted like a little sleeve in there that that it squeezes and fills up the space so it's kind of a little tight and uh, you have to like pry on this a little bit to get it out so just be careful with that you've got a lot of delicate parts in here so just don't beat the crap out of it just delicately get it out. Now we'll get to the wires after we get it loose. I've already disconnected the battery. But we'll get to the wires after we get it loose and I'll come around to this side and have a look at some of this from this side. That's what it looks like. And that AC compressor, it just kind of just rests right there. Just rests down. If you take all the bolts out of those hoses and everything, it just kind of rests there like that. All right, and these are the bolts that I took out of the, these two came out of the back of the AC compressor. There was a bolt holding the coolant line. It's right below it. And then of course, somebody's been here before and they zip tied the wires all down. 
So I just had to cut the zip tie and we'll put a new one on there because more than likely wires, uh, the little plug that holds it right here, the little uh, retaining plug, the little ears are gone off of it or something. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it won't hold it into the proper place anymore. So you kind of have to just zip it down. But if those type of things are not put back properly, there's your cooling fan, okay? And you don't need things to be flopping around and getting close to that and having problems. See, that? that's the cooling fan. Wires can get hit by that and cause problems. So let's have a look at the other side. Okay, so these are the bolts that came out of the AC compressor. All right, and this is the pinch bolt on the... The nut that goes in that bolt in your alternator. This holds that cooling line. This is your outer pulley. I think it's a, like a 13 millimeter or something. Okay, let's have a look here. So we got one more in there. It's in there somewhere. We'll have to. I'll have. To, it's probably way up there. Let's see it. Anyway, there's one more in there. I need to get it out. And of course, this one here. You can push it out a little bit from this side, but just don't booger up the threads. But that's what all this looks like. Now I disconnected this wire, okay, from this sensor here, and took this hose loose from these. There's three of them. There's one, two, and there's another one back there. You take all those out so this can float because you don't want to put pressure on it, mess it up, poke a hole, do anything. It's easier to do this. Take your time, get some of this junk out of the way so you could work. That alternator is going to come out through this hole right here. And we can move this AC compressor around a little bit and squeeze it by. If we need to, we can bend this little tab back a little bit and bend it back when we're done. Uh, that's not a, you know, that's not a deal breaker. We'll get it figured out. So let's get to the next step. Okay, so there it is right there at the top. That 12 millimeter bolt holds the top of that alternator in. And I've got it loose. And I used my articulating head long 3H drive ratchet on there. Oh, there it is. There's the bottom of it. But I got it in there and only just to break it loose. I'll probably just unscrew it with my fingers. I haven't pulled this bolt out yet because I want to, it to hold it and stabilize it so that that other one is not crooked and hard to get out. Okay, so... I'm going to take that wrench out of the way and I'm going to stick my hand up in there and unscrew it. If that doesn't work, I'll use my small quarter inch drive to do the rest. But one of the things that I did have to do to get to it was push the water hose, the water line hose, all the way past it. This hose here, my finger is on, it goes all the way down to here. I had to push it past the front and I had to take this wire the sensor wire completely out. That wire was going through here. It was in the way everywhere. It was restricting things. I had to get rid of it. So get that out of the way. It needs to be cleaned anyway. So let me get to the next step. Okay, hang on. All right, so I got that bolt out there. Okay, got it out. Took it out with my fingers. Once, once I got it out, you wiggle it around. And then that long bolt in the back comes out pretty easily this one here just comes right out no problem and it may still be pinched a little bit and you just wiggle it around but it's going to come out the other side it's not going to come out this way all right so i've got it loose and it's coming out and what i did is i got on this front of this thing like this and i gently pushed on it like that okay and that popped it off I see this bushing right here. I'm pointing at it with the tool. That bushing floats. So when I get this alternator out, I'm going to use a pair of pliers or something and adjust that bushing out a little bit so that I have a little better slack when it goes back in. It's not so tight. So let me get this thing finagled around and see if I can squeeze it out through this hole. All right, so you get all that junk loose. And then you need to take off that power wire right there. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this long extension. I'm going to stick that guy down there and bust it loose and take it out. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it back together the same way. 
There we go, success. That little guy's off, now we just need to get the plug figured out. Hang on a second, let me figure it out. Okay, so there it is. I know it's hard to believe that it's actually coming out through that hole, but that's it. This is the position that it's in right now that it will fit with much finagling, okay? It, this thing ain't going to just fly out, okay? You're going to have to mess with it up and down, rock it back and forth. It is fitting. It is out now. It came out just like this in this clock position, okay? Now, to get a little bit more room, I had to take this bracket off that holds the the pull the idler pulley with the long bolt in it the first idler the big one okay goes in there all right well I had to pull that bracket off that holds that and then this other idler that goes right above it uh, this is the 12 millimeter nut that goes to the power wire on the top of the alternator and also the surprise is there's the damage okay I was not able to unplug this plug because it is melted. This plug was filled up full of hot oil from the engine and it just got destroyed. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see how things go from here. But this thing is just covered in oil and this would explain why we're having these kind of problems. So let me get this thing out on the ground. I know it's difficult to believe that it's coming out through that hole, but it did. And there's the AC compressor right there. I moved it as far down as I could. I pulled this hose here out from beside it and behind it. And this other water line is all the way out. I unplugged the AC connector wire. And this other wire that goes routes around it and behind it everywhere. I pulled it all the way out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. If you go slow and take your time, you will be able to get this thing out without popping the AC, okay? And having to recover the refrigerant. That's another pain in the butt when you're broke down, having to take it to a shop somewhere with a special machine or something to get that refrigerant out. So we were able to do it without that business going on there. So this is what it looks like. Let me get this thing a little bit farther out. I might be able to one hit. This is a really big alternator. Let's see here it's coming out one-handedly there we go so that's it that's where it came from that's what it looks like so there you are that sucker came out there's our our wires I pulled on it and messed around with those wires till they just popped out it was the connector was all melted and fried so we'll get a new uh, a new connector and uh, I'll get this thing rebuilt with a new plug on it and put her back together and we'll be in business oh, before I drop it I don't want to do that there we go but there we are and I'll adjust this little sleeve a little bit here so that when we go back together it won't be so tight it'll be a little easier to deal with but anyway so if you can get this thing out to here buddy you can get that little sucker back in there I promise you and this thing looks like it looks like it's been replaced before. Somebody's done messed with it before. It looks like it. So we'll get this thing figured out. Anyway, that's what it all looks like. Y'all have a good day. Take it easy. I, I hope this helps someone. Please leave me a message about it and let me know and subscribe if possible. I haven't got to a thousand subscribers yet, so I'd like to do that too. Take it easy. Bye.